Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Mary Kim stated, my name is Josh Friedman. Very nice to be here today. Um, in addition to owning uh, my company, One Zero Digital Media, um, I also teach at Golden West College, teaching video production and motion graphics and uh, in the digital media program there. Um, so that brought me here through to you guys. Um, we do a lot of different types of videos at my company. We do primarily promotional videos uh, for websites, YouTube channels, events, things like that. And one of the most wonderful, entertaining parts of my job is being able to fly our drone. Um, I brought my drone with me today, and uh, as Mary Kim stated, we're going to do a demo outside later. This is not an indoor use drone for a room of this size. I've flown in a gymnasium and uh, cathedrals and things like that, but uh, it requires a little more height and less people. <laughs> to fly around. Um, as many of you are probably aware that there is a lot of controversy uh, going on right now uh, regarding um, unmanned aerial vehicles. I jokingly call this lecture drones versus UAVs. Okay, UAVs and drones are the exact same thing. Okay, how many of you are afraid of UAVs? How many of you are afraid of drones, right? So it's kind of a joke in the industry, you know, semantics are important. Um, there's no difference. An unmanned aerial vehicle is anything flying in the sky that is not an animal and does not have a human being inside of it. So there are many, many, many uses for drones. People, I don't know what your misconceptions or preconceptions may be. Um, there are uses for drones that most of us don't even know about yet because they haven't been released. Uh, the, there is a group that released 1,000 uses for drones um, as part of a presentation to the FAA. I will talk about the FAA a lot in a little while. But I thought I would talk about talking about uses for drones. Then I'm going to talk about the manufacturers and types of drones available in the market today. And I'm going to close with a little bit about drone law and the state of the industry as it is up to date in this moment. One of the great things about being a drone operator is, is to be able to follow what's happening right now in the government, with the FAA, with law. Um, and it's ever changing and really, really, really interesting. So we'll get there toward the end. And then again, at the very end, we will take her for a little fly outside. The first use for drones, which is brand new, this just got launched this week, is this gentleman here. Hey, I'm David with Riot, and I'm about to be the first person to ever catch a fish using a drone. My drone's already flying, I have a float attached to it, and a little bit beyond that, there's a fishing hook with a worm on it. Let's go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and that is the first ever fish caught with a drone. And that's my presentation. Thank you. No, I'm kidding. So there you go. So there's, there's one, one new use that you might not have thought about, but he did, and it worked. Okay? He got a little bluegill. I would have loved to see him catch a huge catfish or something that would just tug the drone straight into the water. Marlin jump out and grab his drone. No, I wouldn't wish that upon him. Uh, the primary use that a lot of people are using the drones for these days is for real estate videos. Uh, we'll talk about the legality of that uh, when we start talking about the FAA a little bit more. Um, but this is a real estate video. And um, one of the things that I think is important when filming with drones, and filming is, again, the primary use you're going to hear about because it's easy to shoot videos with drones and to show it to people. It's a little bit harder to make rain clouds and share that with the world and the industry yet because it hasn't really been, been fi um, financed correctly and also completed yet, okay? Um, but filming with drones is something that we're hearing a lot about. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, real estate's a big, 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 easy use for a drone because you can't show off houses of properties, commercial properties in the same way. So here's a video that we've actually created. Welcome to 21920 Heather Ridge Drive in Yorba Linda, California. I'm going to stop it there just to see a couple shots. One of the things I think is really important when it comes to video and drones is that your drone doesn't have to be the only video camera. Okay, for our use, it's just another mount. We have tripods, we have shoulder mounts, we have different types of image stabilized mounts, or uh, sorry, robotic stabilized mounts. The drone is just another mount that we use. It can get me higher than any of the mounts that I have. It's an infinite dolly. It can go a mile in any direction. So I've got a two mile long dolly if I need one in that drone, uh, which is by far the easiest way to capture long shots outdoors, okay? So we, com we combined ground video 
with aerial video, with photography, and it's just another way of capturing video. It's kind of how I like to look at it. That being said, we have recently done an art film with the Sawdust Festival. Well, The Secret's out because we're filming this, but when I went to the Sawdust Festival, I, fig I frankly just wanted to do an art project. I wanted to create an art film, and I thought it was kind of punny and interesting to create an art film filming art at the Sawdust Festival. That being said, it was also a wonderful obstacle course for me because the pathways at the Sawdust Festival are relatively narrow. And I just wanted to make sure, as a, as a pilot, that I was actually able to navigate these pathways without bumping into walls or hitting anything or anyone. Now, of course, this was something that I shared with them after the fact. But um, I felt very confident, and I had a spotter with me the whole time. We were flying between six and seven feet off the ground, so if at any point it went to the side, his hands were ready to just pull it out of the sky, which is not hard to do. So there were no safety issues. We didn't crash it at all. We won't watch this whole thing, but here's just a little bit of sawdust festival. The opening shot here is the camera on the bottom of the drone, so you'll see the lights from the drone. When we're flying it, red lights are forward, green lights are back, and it goes through a sequence like that. Imagine a land not far, far away, where fairy tale creatures play with art every day, where color on canvas makes beautiful marks, where glass mimics flowers under trees with silver bark. A place for weaving ordinary rhymes into extraordinary memories one moment at a time. And I also composed the music for all of our own films, or for all the films that we make. So. Sculptors will sculpt while metal will bend. Around every corner you can make a new friend. Jewels are abundant like treasure to find. Photos on display in frames so of every kind. Clearance <laughs> in some of the pathways. Smiles are drawn on children great. of all sizes. Painted tattoos look like colorful prizes. Glass can be blown and spun in the fire, while leather is sewn into whatever you desire. Love is created and turned into hearts. Inspiration abundant in porcelain art. And so you don't always have to think of the drone as being really high up. You can stay low and still get some great shots. But then there's this. Wide as if time almost stops. Clocks come to life singing ticks before talks. They've never seen this view. Of Music stuff. fills the air in a triangle of sound by a clock that tick tocks with a face that is round. So, here's one example. We shot the whole thing with the drone, but for the most part, we mix it in. Those are the only two videos of mine I'm sharing, so this isn't just a promotion for me and my company, just to share, okay? Um, here's a really amazing, amazing new video that got released. So this is what it looks like when you it's, put a drone over a volcano. It's into the center of the earth. It's like listening to the heartbeat of the planet. The physiological effects of being inside the volcano are significant in that you have every force down there trying to kill you. Now what's amazing is what they did with the footage. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's use the drone to... I wanted to share the Marum Crater uh, that's located in the island nation of Vanuatu by bringing a team with me and documenting this place in a way that's never been seen. The drone that we used is called the Phantom 2 Vision Plus. We had also GoPros mounted onto these particular drones with gimbaled devices so that no matter how much they shook, the video remained stable. We were able to take a series of thousands of photographs around the top of the crater and then process those using a specialized software to render the first of its kind 3D model of the volcano from inside. We were fortunate in that we got the footage we were looking for and unfortunate in the fact that we lost our drones. They, uh, fell they didn't lose all of them. They obviously maintained some of them and got some of the footage. They were actually, to get the shots, they were sending the footage directly from the drone to an off-site computer so that they could get the footage in case they lost the drone. Um, but you can imagine with the heat, um, it melted some of the cameras, and they don't do well with melting. They, they, <laughs> they land very quickly. <laughs> All right, so here's, we're going to just get into some of the technology side of this now a little bit. In a presentation, we're not going to watch the whole thing, but what this gentleman has done is he's taken a series of drones and programmed them together to do simple tasks, simple things like throwing a ball in the air and catching it. So this demonstration right here is pretty impressive. Is they are going to propel a ball in the air and then move to intercept it. 
Okay. See, it's definitely worth waiting for. They're just throwing a ball, but it's pretty amazing, right? Extended. So they're pushing with the three of them together with more energy than they're actually creating themselves, just based on the way that they're maneuvering and the way that they're angling. Domino's Pizza was testing about pizza delivery a year and a half ago, which then spawned Amazon and Google and uh, other large companies to start looking into delivery as well. I absolutely think it will be something we see in the future. I think we're about 10 years off at least um, from drone delivery services, but it absolutely works. Um, I'm going to skip that one for now because it's pretty obvious, and uh, I'm going to jump to this one. Again, we'll talk about laws in a little bit, but they're trying to make different laws for different types of drones based on weight. Uh, there's a four pound limit that uh, most of the laws are applying to right now, drones four to 55 pounds. Um, but they are also then considering creating laws for what are called nano drones. Okay, nano drones are anything under four pounds. And this is uh, one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. We developed a nano quadrotor capable of agile flight. So small. And he's in a room with about 20 cameras, I believe. I think 20. Ish. Mine can't do that. The parrot one can. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Multiple vehicles can fly as a formation. So they're communicating with each other, spatially. Just wait though, it gets a little crazier. between formations in 3D. The team can also navigate in environments with obstacles. Are you getting more scared? <laughs> they can come through your windows. And there's a few companies that have accomplished this. No simple task. So I'm not going to get much into military use, but as you can imagine, um, flying in formation, having multiple drones go in to a location for surveillance of any type is a huge advantage. You know, you fly in one, somebody takes out your drone, you are done. If you fly 150 of them in, though, it might be a little more challenging. Um, and as they start to get as small as bumblebees, then uh, it's, it gets even more interesting, okay? Again, we're a little far off from that being done. Um, and I think this is causing some of the fear, but hopefully we'll, we'll get away from that. Um, I'm not going to show this TED Talk right now, but there is a TED Talk that I just put in the file here if you want to watch it. It's an amazing talk about the agility of drones. Um, he's literally flying it just by moving his hands. And he has two of them at one point where he's, you know, moving like that and the two drones are following him. Um, it's pretty impressive. But it's a relatively long TED Talk. So I thought I would share it there if you guys want to watch it later on, okay? Lots of other use for drones. I mentioned clouds. Um, agriculture industry is looking into flying four drones up, pulling moisture out of the air, slowly moving away from each other and creating a cloud that will rain and uh, create water. Um, the, um, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, sporting events. Right now we have these crazy cameras that are on wires that are going over all the stadiums. And uh, they're a little cumbersome. And they're limited to the length of the wire and to where the wire is. Well, one day you're just going to have eight drones flying around. You're going to have a single operator on the ground operating all eight, switching between the cameras of the eight. And then you're going to have full aerial of sporting arenas and things like that. Um, so these are just a couple different concepts uh, that are public right now. But once again, I mean, the... the Skies are the limit, pun intended, uh, when it comes to drone technology and the uses uh, uh, for drones. All right, so there's a lot of different types of drones on the market. Um, they're mostly categorized based on how many propellers they have. So we do still have helicopters, single prop. Um, the majority of them are quadcopters. Um, and then we have anywhere from six props to the octocopter. Okay, the octocopters are really nice in that they can carry more weight. I'll show you one in a second. Um, also, if one prop goes out, they can actually fly with seven props. Uh, you want to bring it down, but if, you know, it will actually land successfully. 
Um, if one of these props went out right here, it lands very quickly. <laughs> okay. The most popular company, and rightfully so because they really are making a far superior product to anybody in the industry, is a Chinese company called DJI. Um, they are about to hit $1 billion in gross sales. Um, I believe they've been around two or three years. Um, they made a half, half a million, sorry, half a billion dollars last year alone. They're expecting to double that this year. Um, it's kind of the go-to professional drone. If you ask anybody in the industry who's actually using these professionally, what do you have? They probably do have a DJI or a do-it-yourself. There's a lot of do-it-yourselfers. So here's an article here about DJI becoming the first billion-dollar consumer drone company. Okay, uh, just to share with you some of their products. There's three main products that people are buying right now. Um, one of the popular places to buy these are, is, is through B&H, uh, video and audio, video and photo, sorry, photo and video, B&H photo and video, they're in New York City, um, that's where I got mine, I don't work for them, and just, they seem to have the best prices, they make negotiations with some of the drone companies, and they're, um, they have a lot of help when it comes to drones. Um, they'll also put bundles together for you, so you can order them in a bundle, you get it out of the box all ready to fly with a lot of add-ons if you purchase the add-ons. So when it comes to DJI, their most expensive product is this quad, uh, sorry, octocopter right here. Um, this particular one, you can put a DSLR camera. So a camera much like the one I have over there, not with that lens particularly, uh, but with a smaller lens on it, you can fly that around other DSLRs. Probably, that camera right there, you could probably fit um, on it. Um, the reason why drones have become such a popular thing for video in the past couple of years, as opposed to remote control helicopters have been around for a very long time, 20, 30 plus years, you know, as a, as a hobby okay, is something called a gimbal. A gimbal is a device run by a gyroscope that holds the camera still. It's an image stabilizer. This is why the whole video industry and the photography industry is really blown up for the drones. Um, it's really the gimbal. So this octocopter here, you're looking at about $5,200 for a full package. Um, the other two, the DJI Phantom, which is what I have here, has gone through a couple different models. So this is the Phantom 2. This is the most popular drone on the market. You can buy the drone by itself for $1,100, okay? And there's one model that comes with a camera that DJI has developed, and then there's another model that you can put a GoPro camera on, okay? I prefer the GoPro one because as new GoPros come out, I don't have to buy an entire new drone. I can just put the new GoPro on. Now, I might need to upgrade the, um, the gimbal, but it's still less expensive than upgrading a whole drone. Now, one thing I want to point out that's really important, it says $1,100 for the drone. All you're getting here is a quadcopter, the camera, and the remote. I would deem this unsafe for flight. And this is one of the major safety issues in the industry right now, is that there's specifically teenagers or college students that don't have the funding, and they want to buy a drone, and they go and spend $1,100, and they can fly this thing where they want. The challenge with it is that they can't see where they're going on a video camera. You can fly this a mile away. You can barely see it. I lose it in the sky. I have to find it. There it is, you know? Um, it's so far away. At that distance away from you, it's really hard to tell, is it flying towards you? Is it flying away from you? Is it flying side to side? Okay. Now, if it does go out of range, it will fly itself back to home base. Okay. So that's one interesting thing. The downside to that, though, is that it, sometimes it takes longer to get to you than the battery life has left. <laughs> if your battery is down to four minutes left and you're 10 minutes away, once again, it lands itself very quickly. Okay, and that's a safety concern, obviously, and you lose it and uh, you never know where it's going to land. Um, so you need to have some sort of surveillance. In addition to that, there's a little $60 device I have that came with mine or that I bought in the bundle that shows me an overlay on the screen, which I'll show you later, of all the specs. How high is it? How far away from me is it? How, what's the battery life? How long has it been in flight? All that information is read out on the screen as an overlay. Again, you want to have that if you're flying a drone in the sky. All right. You want an extra battery, it's $160. You want a case to protect it, it's another couple hundred dollars, okay? So the bundle that I have is about $2,500. So when people ask me, how much was your drone? It's like, well, the drone itself, you know, is, is one thing. Um, but if I go high to low, I don't know why this won't let me click on relevance and go high to low. Either way, the bundle is about $2,400, $2,500, okay? Um, and worth the extra add-ons. If you can't afford the add-ons, I tell people, don't buy this drone. Buy a different drone that's less expensive. And those do exist. We'll get to them in a second. Okay. Um, I included a link here called Top 5 Drones at CES Today. Oh, I left out the third DJI. I should look at that real quick. The DJI Inspire 1. 
just got released a couple months ago. It's a middle ground between the Phantom and the Octocopter. Okay, so you see it here for 2,900. Um, again, there are some add-ons, so you can see here this one's 3,400. Um, this is designed to be piloted by two people, and a lot of the higher scale drones are. You've got one person who's controlling the drone flight, and a second person controlling the camera. Okay, what makes this drone really unique is as soon as it lifts off the ground, you see the legs are under the props. Those legs come up. So the camera can spin 360 without anything obstructing its view. Um, this drone also shoots in 4K, 4K video. Uh, this one will as well with the correct GoPro. Okay. So this just came out. A lot of schools are picking these up. They're a lot more stable in flight. Uh, you can actually fly this one indoors. So if I had this here, this room wouldn't be a problem for me to actually fly it inside um, with, without major safety concerns. This one here, it has a little more of a radius when I'm flying that kind of swoops from side to side. So I'll take it out outdoors. Okay. So those are DJI's three drones. And from those three, they're going to make a billion dollars soon. Uh, and this year, they're expected to double their, double their money and make a full billion. Um, so this article, Top 5 Drones, do talk about some other companies, but you guys can watch that on your own with the chart. The Parrot drone is $900, and it has a camera on it. It's a relatively new. This is the Bebop product. It can fly upside down, so it's a lot of fun because you can flip both ways. And for filming, that's kind of interesting because you can actually reverse your shot in the sky. The only downside to this Bebop drone is the video quality is nowhere near the GoPro or the camera that comes with the DJI. Uh, this is great for real estate agents that don't want to put a lot of money into their aerial video. Okay, if they're, you know, if they don't want to hire a professional company to come out, it's a nice consumer level product. It's, like I said, about $900. Okay, uh, it's called the Bebop. The video footage of this, particularly the pictures, if you just try to shoot a, a JPEG, it looks kind of like the iPhone 2. <laughs> Okay, so it's not horrible, but it's not the best quality. And no offense to anybody who still has an iPhone 2. Um, but it, it's kind of like that compared to the iPhone 6, which is what the GoPro quality is kind of looking like these days. This is a new little toy I found to be very exciting. This is what he's calling the world's tiniest drone. It's not. It's really the world's tiniest commercialized drone. Whoa! <laughs> this thing has a surprising amount of power for such a small little drone, wow. This is $20. If you want to own a drone for $20, you can own a drone these days. Whoa, okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just making the little minor adjustments. <laughs> so again, it takes a little practice apparently the first time you fly it, um, but it, it is, it's really fun, I think. I just would love to work in an office one day or someone's just, flying their little micro drone around the room. And again, commercially available is one of the smaller ones, but again, there are companies right now developing insects uh, that are technically unmanned vehicles, UAVs. There's the Bebop drone, that was my next one. Uh, there's a company in San Diego called 3D Robotics. What makes them really impressive right now is that Qualcomm just uh, put $50 million into this company. Um, so anybody in investing in stock market might want to look into investing in some of the drone companies right now, especially as the laws eventually do get passed and these companies start to develop more, you're going to see a lot of investment. You're going to see a lot of funding coming in. Um, I read an article a few weeks ago. There's five large companies, three are in San Francisco. One is the 3D Robotics in San Diego and one's in China, each that have received over $30 million in funding recently. Um, and again, Qualcomm invested in 3D Robotics. If you want to see what their drone is looking like these days, their top product on B&H, I think I put it here. It's about $750, so it's a similar price point to that Parrot Bebop drone, and it does have a GoPro mount. So once again, you can put a GoPro on it, and as new GoPros come out with better specs and better technology, you can improve your camera on it. Um, again, it's not gonna be, as this particular model won't be as good as the DJI quadcopters, um, but it, you can put a nicer camera on it, so at least you can still get some good footage with it, okay? So for $750. That's what uh, is coming out of San Diego these days. And there's probably, I don't have an exact count, I would say 1,000 to 1,500 different companies that are developing different types of drones. Um, many of them are in Southern California, but all over the world right now. So you're going to start seeing a lot more of these going up, which is a huge concern for the government, who really wants to control this industry as much as they possibly can. Now, most of us, I think, agree and I agree that there needs to be some sort of regulation. You don't want this to just be in the hands of anybody in the world, okay? 
The only regulations in place right now come from a bill that was passed in 2007. Uh, it was drafted by the FAA. And the most important factor of that is that it says in there, UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, cannot be used commercially. Okay? This has caused a lot of issues for a lot of people who are trying to use drones for profit, but also people who aren't trying to use drones for profit that just want to fly them as, as hobbyists. Okay? Um, the solution for the FAA, you can get a permit. It's always said, oh, you can't get a permit. You can, but since 2007, up until about a year ago, they'd only given out about 200 permits nationally, which is, they probably had hundreds of thousands of applicants and they gave out 200. Almost all of them were to universities with the stipulation they were only flying over the university for research. And some police departments and military, uh, I'm sorry, not military, police departments and other types of enforcement, law enforcement, uh, did get permits to use drones and to fly drones. There are now more and more companies getting permits, but it's still extremely limited. Um, other laws that are in place currently, I have a video here. It's a very embarrassing video. If you work for the FAA, you should have hired one zero digital media to make your video for you. These are the, the current laws as they want us to follow them. Aircraft. But to protect other people and other aircraft in the sky, you need to learn to fly safely. Here are some best practices. Do fly your unmanned aircraft below 400 feet. Don't fly your unmanned aircraft beyond your line of sight. Do fly with local clubs. Don't fly near airports or any manned aircraft. Do take a lesson before you fly. Don't fly near people or stadiums. Nobody's really offering lessons though, just to let you know. Especially the FAA. Don't fly anything that weighs more than 55 pounds. What weighs 55 pounds? Ralph the world's largest bunny rabbit. Do fly for fun. Don't fly for payment or commercial purposes unless specifically authorized by the FAA. Don't be careless or reckless. You could be fined if you endanger people or other aircraft. Do be safe and know before you fly. Slightly embarrassing, yes? <laughs> um, I think it may teach junior high because your students could do a better job. But anyways, um, there's a lot of controversy again, and, and a battle that's been kind of sadly taking place. The FAA is currently drafting new laws. Okay, Obama's administration in 2015 said the FAA is the one that should be drafting the new laws. Okay, um, They're currently in the stage of lawmaking for discussion, and they will be until about April 24th or April 26th. The first draft of laws had some really positive things and some really scary, awkward things. Positive thing, they decided to raise the limit to 500 feet, okay? Now there are other laws in place I kind of left out. So for example, you can't fly currently legally within a radius of an airport. Problem with that is that most people don't know when you're exactly three, four, or five miles away. But again, I would never fly right by John Wayne Airport, okay? Uh, we are in an awkward area though because we have so many airports so close to each other between John Wayne and Ontario and Long Beach and LAX that that would negate most of the area as far as no-fly zone, okay? Um, as of last year, you can't fly over a uh, stadium. That's national, uh, federal law. You can't fly over stadiums. You can't fly in national parks, okay? Those are pretty much the laws in place. Um, and then you can't fly commercially, which is the problem for a lot of people right now. What is commercial use? Question one. And more importantly, what is a UAV? So the first case to ever go to court was a guy who owned an ice fishing company, one of the first cases. And he was flying six packs of beer out to the ice fishermen and charging them for it. They said, commercial use, you're making money with a drone, you can't do that, even though it's his property, his drone, his beer, okay? Um, it went to court and the judge ruled that he wasn't using an unmanned aerial vehicle, it was a hobbyist toy. This was a big problem for the FAA. This is when the FAA went to war with the drone industry. And sadly, that's where we're at now. You have drone operators and drone companies that are fighting to adjust the laws that the FAA is writing. One of the big negatives in the first draft was in order to get a license, you had to be a licensed pilot of an actual aircraft, right? 150 hours, maybe $15,000, and then you can apply for a license and get a license. In fact, there is a gentleman in Arizona right now in Tucson who is the only person in the United States of America that has a permit to fly drones commercially for real estate. He also is a pilot and has a pilot's license, okay? Would have been a great way for the FAA to make a whole lot more money on people trying to buy pilot's licenses, okay? 
Not to share my bias, I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay, the FAA is a company. <laughs> um, they got rid of that. Fortunately, that's no longer in the newest draft of the rules. Okay, the new rules most of us are pretty happy with, I think. Um, you have to have a permit to fly. You need to be at least 17 years old to obtain a permit to fly. Um, one other interesting rule for a while was that they were only applying the laws to commercial use, which meant that anybody who was a hobbyist could fly these things anywhere they want and pretty much do what they want with it. Um, but that obviously negated safety, and I think they got caught. <laughs> that you know you can't just charge the people who are making money on this for a permit. You know you need to make more stringent rules. They're probably going to require a class that we'll have to take. Nobody knows what the class is going to be and who's offering it, who's paying for that. Um, you're going to have to register your drone, much like a motorcyclist has to register a motorcycle or a car driver registers a car. So there's a lot of this to be worked out. Um, it's not going to be worked out for at least two to three years. So this is how laws work. Again, they're currently still in the caucus discussion stage. Um, when it comes out, and I hope it comes out sooner than later, to be honest, I would love to be a drone operator with a permit. Um, then you know, we'll just have to apply for the permit and hopefully get it. You can apply for permits now, and they're starting to give a few more out um, on the FAA website. There's a bunch of rules right there. I'll just show really quickly before we do our demonstration, and I'll get to some questions. Um, I have a couple links here for drone laws. Uh, this is the FAA website that has the FAA's information. Then there's a website called dronelaw.net. You get a lot more information on dronelaw.net than you're going to get on the FAA website. Okay, what does that say? Um, Interesting article, third one down there. This just happened yesterday. There's a kid in Florida, poor kid, who received a cease and desist letter from the FAA because he's using his drone commercially. He doesn't have a company, he doesn't have a website, he hasn't made a dollar on his drone. If you go to his website, it links to his YouTube channel. And the FAA has claimed that because he's getting money from the ads on YouTube, then he's using it commercially. I have no idea how the FAA is going to attempt to go after every single person who's posted a video using an aerial vehicle on YouTube, okay? Which is the other problem. They don't have the funds to, to, to oversee this. Uh, there's a lot of people that think that this should be a third-party organization, not the FAA, to be the one drafting these laws, but they're the ones drafting the laws, and that's how it is. So there's a lot of controversy, obviously, as I stated. Um, you'll see a lot in the news. When you see it in the news, it's really obvious who paid for the news story, okay? When you see drones in volcanoes for science, I guarantee you that the drone lobby paid or made sure that that was seen. When you hear a flight recorder say, I think I saw a drone or an unmanned aerial vehicle at 4,000 feet. First of all, I'm not convinced that that's legit. <laughs> I'm just not. Anybody could have recorded that. Or if it is legit, it's the one clip of audio that the FAA shared with everybody in the news media, so that's what you're hearing. Okay, a drone crashed on the White House lawn. You guys remember this, two weeks ago? This is me as a conspiracy theorist. I'm pretty convinced that somebody landed a drone with permission on the White House lawn to write a piece. Do you really think the only drone to crash in all of Washington, D.C. landed on the White House lawn and wasn't shot down? and happened when the president was gone. And the operator, by the way, member of the CIA, we can't release his name. So think about this sort of things. I'm not, you know, I'm kind of one-sided here as an operator. At the same time, there's interesting things happening in the world. Um, one of my mentors is a gentleman named Jeff Foster. There's a lot of stuff that Jeff has released. Um, he's written a bunch of books on Photoshop, if you, you might know his name from that industry. Um, but he's a drone operator in San Francisco and making a big name for himself in the industry. Um, so you can check out some of Jeff's stuff, and uh, I think he's got a pretty honest perspective on what's going on. So this is one of my favorite videos that's been made. There's a link to it, but I'll just go from here. I think it has like 16 million views. Superman GoPro. I didn't make this. I wish I did. There you are. Yeah, 16.6 .6 million views. So they've actually made some money on this. I'm sure there's an ad. You're going to borrow something off the Navy. There and we're going to get rid of the ad. No. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> if found, return to Sam Gorski. That's all look pretty cool. Yeah. 
So the hands are green screen, but they seamlessly go between the real GoPro footage and then the drone picks up. So I'll do it a couple more times. And then they speed it up for effect. So anyways, you get that. He eventually lands at Gorski's house and puts a dent in his backyard. So again, you know, keep an eye out in the industry. It's a really exciting thing to watch. Um, it's only a matter of time before somebody does weaponize one of these and, and do a terrorist act. So this is going to be a big issue. But I will make the argument, somebody can drive a remote control car into a situation no differently than one of these. I'm not saying anybody should. You should not. You know, but. Um, it's going to be a big challenge, I think, for the drone industry uh, to, to battle some of these problems. Um, you asked the question about Chinese versus anybody else. I promise you the Israeli military, the United States military, and a lot of these other countries are using drones that we don't even know about. And I don't mean the drones that we do know about. Okay, So one quick resource. If you use an app called Zite, Z-I-T-E, it's a smart magazine, um, free for any of your devices. Um, you can type in a drone category. You just put in category favorite drone, and you'll get up-to-date articles uh, by the minute, by the hour in the drone industry. The downside is half of the articles are the drones that I'm interested in, and half of them are the drones that our government uses. <laughs> so I try to ignore that whole side of the industry because it's a different industry entirely, for me at least. Um, but Zeit has a lot of really good up-to-date articles that you can check out on drones. All right, well, let's take her outside. I'll do just a quick one minute, two minute demonstration. So first thing I do is check the battery. You push the button, it is a full battery. I click three times. One, two, three, and it sings to me. And immediately I have an overlay on my screen from the GoPro. And again, if you look at the perimeter, it's hard to see that I know, but you can see all the specs and all the numbers, okay? First test I do is I play with the toggle back here. I mentioned the gyroscope. See the camera? I turn the drone, the camera stays straight. And it does that in flight as well. Um, I can affect this axis right here in flight. So I'm moving a button over here. But one thing I have forgotten to do a couple times recently is hit record. <laughs> okay, I will record this flight. The one with the camera built in, you can actually change the specs when it's in the sky. Or you can tell it to record when it's in the sky. One of the downsides of the GoPro is you can't. All right, I always check this, make sure I'm clear. We get the props going. Cool. And we start this by going straight up. Again, 400 feet is my legal height. I am at 75 meters on the left here. That's 100 meters, so that's 300 feet right there. And you can imagine, if you don't have a camera on here to see what direction it's going, it's a little difficult to see. Again, red is forward, green is backward. I can kind of see that from here. But if I go another 100 feet up, it gets a little hard. And it goes a mile in any direction. So you can imagine if I fly a mile away, um, it gets a little more challenging. But the views from here are just fantastic. There's the freeway. Is there a no, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> a little tip, you never want to bring any copter straight down. You lose air and it'll crash. A helicopter will do the same thing. So when I'm coming down, I want to kind of angle a little. So I can land it on the ground safely, but I would much rather just grab it because it won't tilt over. And power down. There we go.